So the topic I want to share today is repentance. Say repentance. repentance. Now I can preach it like this, okay? Repent! <laughs> okay? Or I can tell you, change your mind. All right? You used to think this way, now think this way. Because the word repentance is so abused today that people say things like, all right, well, so-and-so doesn't preach repentance. Well, that preacher, you know, he doesn't preach repentance, as if they are an authority on repentance. And, and I just want to question their idea of repentance. What do they mean when they say repentance? All right? When they say repentance, many of them are referring to you've got to be sin conscious. You've got you to beat yourself over your sins. You've got to be sin conscious. Now, nothing could be further from the truth when it comes to the gospel. The gospel says because of what Christ has done, we should have no more sin consciousness. We saw that last week, didn't we? In Hebrews 10. We saw that a believer once cleansed, and the word once cleansed in the Greek is the perfect tense, never to be repeated act. All right? The effects last forever. Once you are cleansed, perfect tense, you should have no more sin consciousness or conscience of sins in the old King James. Amen? And that should have is in the present active. That means you've got to shake it off. You've got to actively shake it off every moment. Amen? So <coughs> preaching, preaching a repentance in the area of imparting consciousness of sins is nothing more than, than dishonoring the work of Jesus. If someone paid my debt, a huge debt, all right, and I, and, and I hear the news, the good news, that he paid my debt, okay? He's a man of integrity. And I hear the, the news, and I laugh it off, and I say, I don't believe it. Though it's still paid, I have dishonored that man. Are you listening? Moreover, not only have I dishonored the man, whenever I meet my creditor, I will have, what, debt on my conscience, even though it's paid. So therefore, mankind, you know, the sinner, for example, all right, always have these bad and hard thoughts about God. Hard thoughts. Thoughts are not based on facts because God loves sinful man. God loves man in his sinful, guilty, lost condition. God sent his son while man was still lost, while man was still sinful. Christ died when man was still cursing, blaspheming him, putting him on the cross. And God used the cross that wicked hands delivered him to, all right, to be an instrument of salvation and redemption for all men. We'll never understand the love of God. Which one came first? Was it Peter wept, then the Lord turned and looked at Peter? You know the story? The Bible says that Jesus was bound in, uh, in Caiaphas' house, and Peter was outside. When uh, a few people recognized Peter as one of Jesus' disciples, he denied knowing Jesus. And the Bible says with cursing and swearing. And the Bible says just before the, the, the cock crew, all right, at the third denial, the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. Just right after Peter denied the third time. Okay, Peter went out crying. Now, which one came first? Was it because Peter cried, the Lord turned and looked at him? No, it's the reverse. After he denied knowing Jesus, the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. Amen. That broke his heart. It's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. Amen. I'm getting ahead of myself, but uh, I just love, you know, the goodness of God. You know, here and there, you will come out, praise God. And by the way, Peter, we've been doing a series on uh, uh, misunderstood passages of Scripture. We covered Hebrews 10 last week. If we sin willfully, what does it mean? Hebrews 6, last two weeks, or the week before that. All right, and Hebrews 6 says it's impossible for those who are once enlightened, right? Tasted the good word of God, the powers of the world to come, and they fall away to renew them to repentance. Well, what, what about Peter? Peter tasted the good word of God. I mean, he, he, he tasted the powers of the world to come. He was partaker of the Holy Spirit or sharer of the Holy Spirit. He did miracles with Jesus. I mean, he heard Jesus preaching. He fell away. And it was possible to renew him to repentance. So obviously, Hebrews 6 is not referring to what we think it is. Get that teaching, okay? I won't be going through that, all right? But uh, uh, Peter was restored, wasn't he? Amen. The Bible says in 2 uh, John uh, verse 1, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Does not say if any man repent. The moment a believer sins, all right, straight away, the advocate goes to the Father. It is not we go to the priest. It is the priest goes to the Father. Straight away. And presents himself not to deal with our sins anymore it's done done it's, it's done over, done once and for all it's a it's a done deal i should say amen, amen. finish once and for all can i have a good amen? amen 
So this idea, uh, when people say, you got to preach more on repentance, is actually they want you to, to hit people and beat people. But God told me to feed my sheep, Amen. not beat my sheep. Amen. Amen. And the thing is this, there is rebuke in the Word of God, there's correction in the Word of God, but it's never, never depressing you. You know, it's one thing to break a child's stubborn will. It's another thing to break the child's inner man, his spirit. You don't break a child's spirit, but you must break his uh, strong will. Amen. If he's rebellious, you got to break his will. Affirm the child, but break the will. Amen. Amen. And God never, never crushes you. you how many understand that? So what do you mean when you say repentance? What do these people mean when they say repentance? Number one, we saw that erroneous idea. They want, they want the preacher to, sh to impart sin consciousness to the people. And that's not God's way in the gospel today. Now, I'm going to show you one thing. Once upon a time, in the Old Testament, there are plenty of occasions to show you that you have to repent first before God blesses you. In the Old Testament, you have to repent, turn away from sin, and then God blesses you. Now listen, in the New Testament, God blesses you, and it's the goodness of God that leads you to repentance. Now, I've been using that verse all the time, but look up the verse, Romans 2, verse 4. Or do you despise the riches of His goodness? How many know God is not just good? He is plenty of good. <laughs> the riches of His goodness, forbearance and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance. The word lead there is like the Holy Spirit leading you. The goodness of God leads you where? To repentance. It is not repentance. Listen, it is not repentance leads you to goodness. It is goodness that leads you to repentance. A lot of believers still have this idea, if I repent, it will lead me to God's goodness. But hey, the Bible says God's goodness that leads you to repentance. It was the Lord turning around looking at Peter, all right, that broke Peter's heart, that kept him in love with Jesus. There's something about the look that says, you denied me, but I still love you. Amen?